Welcome to This Week in BJJ, the world's first and only live jiu-jitsu show. Brought to you by Zebra Mats, simply Z-Best. Q5 Labs, stay alpha. And Defense Soap, defend what you have built. And here's your host, Budo Jake. Welcome to a special episode of This Week in BJJ. Today I'm honored to have Gabriel Costa, who's an official IBJJF referee director, and he's going to talk about some of the new rules. But before we get into that, give me a little bit of a story about your background in jiu-jitsu. Hi, uh, it's nice to be here and help uh, Budo to clarify a little bit more of the rules. Uh, I'm training jiu-jitsu since 93. Um, I used to live in Florianópolis, Brazil. I got my black belt over Claudio Arraes from uh, Clan Jiu-Jitsu. I came to live in America uh, five years ago, almost five years, and I teach in Half Gracie, Chino Hills, also in work with IBJJF as uh, on the rules department, helping uh, to grow the referee departments too. Cool. So the IBJF rule book came out, I think a couple years ago, and it was great because it finally clarified all the rules. But uh, each year it seems they seem to fine tune things and clarify things a little bit more. But first of all, why do we need to have rules in BJJ? Well, um, the sport's pretty complex, of course, taking us uh, 10 years, around 10 years to get a black belt. So the rules, as simple as we want to have it, it's kind of hard to be that simple. Uh, tournaments today with more than 3,000 competitors as SPNMs, awards, and European would be impossible to make a tournament with just submissions, even like we see some, some guys talking about that. The rules must be there to, of course, make us safe. And the scoring position is always on progression with the background and the structure of a regular fight. So just to so, clarify that, the point system is based on a real fight. A real fight, exactly. <laughs> and always in a progression too, it doesn't step back. So have few things as like a pulls on the, on the sport and on the rules to make sure from the start towards the end, we get somebody more competitive or combative, looking to win a fight in a real fight or a self-defense situation. You can read like that. So the general rule is if you're earning <clears throat> points, you're getting into a position where you could be applying damage if it was a real exactly. street fight. And as close as that can be, higher go the points, like mount and back control is the highest points on the jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. And what is the idea of an advantage point? The advantage point must be almost a point. So we had like pre-competitive uh, situations, we have few athletes so well trained and when they get together, they can't make the points happen, even if they try hard for 10 minutes as black belts. So the advantage came to be something that is almost a point. So I did a sweep, I, I went uh, to try to get on top, but I couldn't complete, my partner defended and put me back on the ground, that will be almost a, a, a point, so it's advantage. And the second way to see that is when we have almost a submission. The submission is, of course, uh, the highest spot of the sport, is the, the best uh, timing, the best point. So when we get pretty close to submission, not attempt a submission, but when you almost tap in uh, our opponent, we deserve also advantage, so it's the, the way as as work. Mm -hmm. So as the years goes on, there's more and more rules added. Do you think this makes it more complex, more difficult to understand, or does it make it safer? Uh, the history of IBJF coming with the new uh, book, like you said uh, a few moments ago, was exactly be as clear as possible <clears throat> with pictures, and uh, as much as the jiu-jitsu it's complex and came like new moves. Uh, we can even use in like 50-50 uh, how it was like a few years ago. Uh, the rules must adapt, must to follow the development of the sport. So we need to have a few adjustments. Normally that happens in, in 22 years with like big changes and every, maybe every year, a little bit just uh, adjust, like you said, so we doesn't keep that loose. We keep the fighters uh, going through uh, submissions, looking for that all the time, and of course, keep competitive. Okay, in just a moment, I wanna ask you about what exactly those rule changes were uh, that were just enacted a couple of days ago. But one last question, and that is, 
how do the new rules get implemented? Is it just an IBJJF top-down decision? Or what goes into, how do you decide what things are going to be changed and what will not? That's something as we, we try to change how it was like before. Uh, once we have like a big teams always here, normally here in LA, uh, working on the big tournaments, we try to, to set up meetings with all the leaders of the, the big teams. <clears throat> and development there, the ideas about what you need to change, where is the gaps, and how we should development uh, there. The idea is don't implement any uh, different rule for the sport before. Speak with all the leaders and see if that's the best way to go. So uh, we're going to get, of course, the change. All that was well spoken with the big leaders, and uh, we got inside, not agreement all the time with everybody, but the common sense about what we would be better for the sport, for the competitions, and of course for all the school. So most of the big teams are in agreement that these rule changes, changes should be made? Yes, most of the big teams in agreement with all the changes. All right. Well, let's get into what those rule changes are. Let's go. I want to thank Cole for being part of this today. And uh, so Gabriel, there was a lot of rule changes that were made, but there was three main ones. The first one was the single leg rule, right? Yes, the single leg will start like with uh, the idea to protect the athletes uh, from hitting his heads on the ground in a single leg with the head on the outside. That's pretty common on wrestling and also uh, on jiu-jitsu practice. So we spread that into groups. The first one will be until we get a, a all the ages until the juvenile divisions, even blue and purple belts in juvenile and youngers, and also adults and masters, white belts. So when the single leg happens, the ref and the head goes on the outside, the ref should stop the fight and restart on the stand up with no uh, penalties for either athlete. So all juveniles and adult white belts, if my opponent comes in for a single leg, and Whatever five. happens, he brings his head outside, his head even if you him. push the head, it's not, not a problem. On that point, Paro, the ref should stop the fight, take the athletes apart, and restart. Combat! No penalties or anything? No penalties at all. Uh, what's happened now on the adult divisions from blue belt and up, uh, that will be keep, uh, the fight will keep going like that. The problem is when the athlete grabs the, the belt, and throw his opponents on his head. So the idea is not a takedown or even a counter takedown. That, in uh, our mind, will work as a slam and as aggression against his opponent. So if you go there and throw again, the single leg is normal, came to the head outside. Jake now have the grip on the belt, what like means he using his elbow as leverage. And here, if Jacob sit and throw his elbow on the ground, would be like throwing his partner with his head down. That have can cause a lot of damage. Have, can have a lot of damage. Uh, the neck and the cervical is something as we need to kind of uh, protect, and that will be a disqualification when, he, uh, when you, on this case, throw your partner on his head on the ground. So if he puts his head there or <coughs> I push his head to the outside, then it's okay it's as not long a problem. as I don't grab here and try to slam him down. Exactly. Okay. And the take down, he, your partner can still try to apply and you can still try to apply your counter takedowns, being trying to go to the back or also even throw him on his back, giving him a counter takedown. Right. Okay? Very good. Okay. That's the first major rule change. So the second major rule change involves knee reaping, is that right? Exactly. Uh, starting with that, that rule like many years ago, uh, wasn't that common the guard and the situations as like we having the foot on the hip or even attacking from the foot lock position. So every time the foot crossing, they was disqualifying the athletes. Uh, so what he had on the past few years is that many disqualifications and without putting the risk on the knee. We took a little bit longer because it's a hard way to understand how we could set up the right ways to stop the fight and if it was possible give a penalty how we will start to using uh, next week. So 
let's try see how it is so knee reaping happens when i bring my leg up and over his knee right so what's happened here as long as your foot doesn't cross the center line of your partner's body you're in a good spot so you can use your foot here with no problem the problem is every time you cross the center of his body if that happens here the ref should stop right away bring the foot back to the right position give you a penalty because he needs to stop the fight and change uh, the positionings and restart the combat mm -hmm. and we keep going from there that i think is the most common uh, situation and his foot here and what is important to understand must to be stuck in your body or you grabbing or stepping on the ground because if without that that kind of situations his leg will be free and you have no pressure on the knee at all what happens if i bring it over and i realize that i'm reaping and i bring it right back still a situation as the ref should stop right away and fix the move but if you just scratch the line and come back, the ref will probably not stop the fight and everybody keep fighting on the regular way. What's also happened, if you bring your foot all the way and cross, that is already a dangerous spot for your partner and here will be a disqualification. Mm -hmm. So the ref should stop, stand you up and disqualify you by that. What if I triangle my legs? Still the same thing mm -hmm. as much as you doesn't pass in the center of the body, the ref should already stop the fight as soon as you bring your foot towards the center and bring your foot out and, and fix. Okay. So I think we're gonna see a lot more just penalties and restarts and less DQs. Probably you're gonna have much more penalties and restarts, fixing and not as much DQ. The other problem is when somebody have a submission and hold and that uh, it's easy to understand on the foot lock situations. So somebody's making a foot lock, let's try. To see again, see on the ground. You can see it on the ground, like in uh, yeah. So what's happened here? Jacob is attacking a foot. He have a submission in hold. You can grab, finish the submission in hold there. If Jacob now cross the foot, once that's a submission in hold, we shouldn't stop the fight and restart. We cannot do that. So what's going to happen? That even without coming to the edge of the body of your opponent you will be disqualified. Mm -hmm. The second chance here happens with thinking now in your foot, you attacking, and your partner trying to defend his foot, bringing his foot and ripping to. Still a submission and hold, and your partner ripping knee, right? So he will be the one disqualifying on that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. All right. It's important to understand if the foot is free, we have no stop and the fight keep going. Okay. So the third and last major rule change involves the double guard pole position. Exactly. Uh, on the double guard pull, what we need to understand is like both athletes trying to pull guard, that's not a problem, you'll never be. Guard cannot be uh, the problem in jiu-jitsu. Uh, and no one try to get on top. So we have advantage for whoever gets on top first. But right now, even if they keep moving, we have just three spots, we will not penalize them after 20 seconds. The first one, of course, somebody pop up, we're gonna have advantage, and now it's not a double guard pull anymore. Let's go through that real quick. So we both, exactly. we both pull, pull guard, guard and someone and pop up. up. Right now, Jake should have advantage, and that, even if you sit on the ground again, that's not a double guard pull anymore, because you are the athlete passing guard, and your partner will be the one defending guard. So if he pops up, he'll not get advantage. Now he's gonna have two points from sweep. So that's not the situation we trying to regulate on this one here. Mm -hmm. But when both athletes pull guard on the same time and no one pops up. Right, so we both, we're standing, we both pull guard, neither one wants to come up. Right now, if the referee, even if you're trying to attack and like drag or try the bidding ball and come back in, a, in that kind of situation, after 20 seconds, even attacking, the ref should stop the fight with paro, Stand you both up. 
analyze with a new gesture, lute, lute, and restart on stand up. Combat. So even if we're both actively going for sweeps? Even, it's not a sweep yet because right. he doesn't have a guarder and a guy, guy in passing. But as soon as we have that, it's not the same situation anymore. So even attacking, we will, not, uh, we will need to count that 20 and stop the fight. What's happened is we have two situations we will always wait. The first one is a submission in hold. Even if it's not close to the submission. If the submission is in hold and is well made, well locked, we will wait. If after 20 seconds the submission is there, we wait in 10, 20 seconds until the submission get out. If that happens, as soon as the, as the athlete get, free himself from the submission, the referee should stop, back stand up, and make the same procedure he just did. So just to illustrate that, we both pull guard. I go for a foot lock. And they're passing the 20 seconds. Right. 21, 22, 23, you go to 30, and you let go, but you're still on the double pull guard. Parou, stand up, analyzing you both, and restarting the combat. So one of the times the referee will not stop is when an athlete is almost getting a position to score some points. So it's like a double pull, one of them trying to like move like a berimbolo, and when he's getting on the back, hit the 20 seconds. Once he's almost getting the back control, the referee should wait. So let's try to show and see how it is. Double pull guard, one of them going to a berimbolo, and here, He's almost getting the back control. So as long as Jake here is, tr is trying to get up and get his hooks in to get the position, the ref should wait. If somehow his opponent trying to defend a little bit and Jake froze for a while, that can be considering a frozen position and the ref can stop the fight and back on the stand. So the point is, if you're going for a sweep, or, or you better keep going. Keep going, keep looking for. Mm -hmm. While you cannot get in a position, you can stop. And once we didn't have a guarded guy, we didn't have the advantage from the first beginning. So we're still in a double guard situation if you both uh, face each other one more time. So those were the three major rule changes. There was also a minor uniform change as well. Yes, uh, we, had a, we had to change something to accept uh, the community by religions uh, proposed one uh, using a headgear. So today we had uh, a headgear with no uh, strings, must be an elastic material. Uh, you can see that on the chapter number eight. So uh, how well uh, described is the is the headgear. And that's only for women, right? Only for women. Uh, the guy is still needing like, to have his head free, no uh, ear uh, protectors, nothing like that right. inside the tournament's fightings. Wow, well thanks so much for clarifying all these rule changes. And um, how often are the rules changed? Uh, we're probably gonna have like major ru uh, rules changes in every like two years, but uh, adjust between. Okay. So we have a few uh, adding on, on the rules book, but normally just updates. All the moves we have a kind of a problem or situation we, we must fix, we may gonna, gonna do. We have like uh, the rules book in a PDF file so everybody can have on the smartphones or tablets. You can care with you. The idea is having that as a consulting book in a daily basis. So if you have a, a, a thought, oh, maybe that's a point or not, we should just be able to get to the rules book and have that answers. Cool. So Gabriel, thank you so much for sharing thank that. Thank you so much. And Cole, good job today. Cool. Thank you too. So those were all the major rule changes, but of course, if you're gonna compete in an IBGF tournament, you need to know all the rules. Go to IBGF.com, download the rule book, and make sure you're well aware of all those things. Don't get DQ'd, and we'll see you guys next time on the mats. That concludes this installment of This Week in BJJ. Watch and review past episodes on iTunes and YouTube, and then be sure to join us again right here for another live edition of This Week in BJJ, brought to you by BudoVideos.com.